Now, when it comes to this drink in particular, you either love it, you hate it, you're telling your kids that they should drink it, or you're a little too dependent on it, which is unfortunately most of my friends in college. You might be wondering why we are talking about Monster Energy now. That's because before they actually downsize from a 500 milliliter can into a comfortable 355 milliliter can, this product was actually invisible on the Malaysian market. The only places where you could actually buy Monster Energy drink here in Malaysia were in premium imported supermarkets. Back then, Monster Energy actually came with a hefty price of 12 ringgit a can. Over here in Malaysia, the competitive prices for energy drinks could range anywhere between 1 ringgit to 7 ringgit. On top of that, Monster didn't have a halal certification. It didn't have anything haram as per se, but without the halal certification, it could actually cause a lot of complications, especially within a Muslim majority country. So now that poses a very interesting problem. You've got a product that no one can buy. You've got a product that the retailer wants to have on their shelves. But it's also a product that's highly marketable and is practically everywhere. So what changed? Earlier this year, Coca-Cola actually took an active role in being the distributor of the Monster Energy drink. Back in 2014, Coca-Cola actually bought a 60.7% stake in the Monster Beverage Corporation, so they had just about as much responsibility as Monster itself to fix the problems with the product. So the first thing you have definitely noticed was the fact that the can is smaller. However, it's not just the size that matters. They also removed a number of ingredients from the formula itself. Most people noted the absence of ginseng and guarana. However, they've also removed four other ingredients. I could actually go into what these ingredients actually do. However, there'll be a video on its own. Now they've got a smaller can, they've got less ingredients. So they managed to save some money and the price is lower. So it's a little more accessible in terms of the price. What about the halal certification? To manufacture a new formula, they actually had the drink made in the Netherlands, which fortunately had the Halal Food Authority. The HFA is an independent voluntary nonprofit that actually aims to supervise, inspect, audit, and certify companies that comply with halal practices and principles. Fortunately, they're also recognized here in Malaysia. Thus, our beloved drink right here actually managed to get its halal certification, which can be seen right at the back of the can. With the halal label now plastered on the new Monster Energy can, retailers have more confidence in the product being able to be sold to the mass consumer. So there you have it. With one company recognizing the potential for product and making several small changes to fit the needs of the masses, they turned a product which was previously untouchable into a product that's now slightly more health conscious, a product that has a competitive price point, and a product that thanks to its halal certifications is now readily available to the mass market. I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao! I'm smiling only because it's over. That's the only reason why I'm smiling. This took me way too long. It's 2.20 in the morning. Why? Why did I... Why did I spend so much time researching and editing? <laughs>